Hello. Can everyone hear me? Anyone who's here hear me? <laughs> I'm just going to see if I'd rather get rid of um, any complications up front versus during. So just starting. <clears throat> I have the chat set up. Hi, Tracy. I have the chat set up over here on my iPad and it's showing me the chat as I speak to the camera. It's just not the right way. I gotta talk over here to have my eyes facing the right way. <laughs> it's like doing this with your phone is a little weird because your eyeballs need to go off to the side. <clears throat> Welcome, welcome. We're going to wait for a few minutes to uh, have everyone arrive. Hi, Rachel. Who else is here? Hi, Amy. Lisa's just finishing up. This is so exciting to me to be able to like interact really with people from all over the world in one moment of time. It's pretty exciting. Hi, Janine. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Linda. It's good to see you too. <clears throat> Hello, Sayla. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Ruth. Hello, Jenna. <laughs> my my braids. <laughs> it's one of my favorites to do. Keeps my hair out of my face. Hi, Elaine. Thank you so much. Hi, Erica. <laughs> Hi, Priscilla. Hi, Carolyn. Welcome. Hi, Zoe. Or Zoe. Hi, Lee. Hi, Sally. This is my 100 day project from 2021. I made 100 paper mobiles. And um, because the 100 day project starts in February, after the second week went by, I started making heart mobiles and I put love song lyrics on them. And then when Valentine's was over, I switched to stars and kept doing the lyrics. So all of the star mobiles have different um, song lyrics. So I did like divas, like Lady Gaga and, um, you know, Tracy Chapman. And I did, you know, the singer songwriters. I did rock stars. So it was like basically the stars were like the the stars the rock stars songs so that's what i did for my 100 day project and i have it here installed like this in my daughter's room because really where else am i going to put it i don't really know where else i would put that <laughs> and it's kind of a cool installation because it's 3d and everything and i did um send quite a few of them away in the mail so um, they're shareable. If you ever wanted to make a paper mobile and send it to someone, you could send one of these heart mobiles to someone as a Valentine. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Sally. I know it was kind of timely, right? And, and that's what I love about creativity that um, you, 
you kind of just pull in whatever influences are out there for you and use them to create. So that's why I ended up making heart mobiles because of the timing. So, um, and then once I started putting lyrics on, everyone was totally into the lyrics. I would do like a film it for my, for a reel on um, Instagram and I'd film like just panning down the mobile and people would start guessing the songs from the lyrics. So I realized after like a week of doing Valentine's heart mobiles that I had to keep doing song lyrics on the mobiles. Yes, Sally, that's it. It's about kind of, you know, tuning in, right? Tuning in to what the, what the atmosphere, the universe can offer you, you know? All right, well, we are on. We are in time, we are in time now. And um, thank you, Rachel. I appreciate that. I have, um, I'm gonna introduce myself in a sec. But um, just because we were talking about the mobiles, like I said, they're shareable. You can just kind of bundle them up and put them into an envelope and send them to someone. And there is a project making a heart mobile like that in my book called Share Your Joy. And it's all about mixed media shareable art and making art and creating it and experiencing the joy of creativity and then sharing that joy with someone else by sending it to them in the mail. So there's lots of different projects in there um, that you can send in the mail. Um, Jana is part of my book. She's here on the chat. So thank you, Jana, once again for being part of it. And um, it's actually coming out in print this week, September 5th. So for everybody that pre-ordered it, it will be arriving to you shortly after September 5th, probably by the next day if you ordered it from Amazon. So that's super exciting. And, um, but this live is all about art journaling as is Wonderlust. And I am Sarah Gardner, also known as Juicy S of Juicy S Art. I am a mixed media artist and teacher. I've been doing mixed media art journaling and making shareable art since around 2007. And it all started with me hosting girls artisan camps here at my home for my daughter and her friends when she was around six years old. She's now 22 and away at college. And basically what those camps kind of taught me was that the best part of mixed media, of just playing with art supplies, is acting like a kid, in embracing some playfulness and a childlike attitude in order to get outside of your head and quiet that inner critic. So that's what my um, creative practice has been all about for this many years. And one of the ways that I I love to um, create is in layers. For me, mixed media is all about layers. And in my um, art journals, I tend to create multi-layered art journal spreads. And sometimes it can take me days to, com to complete a spread because there's so many layers there. Because for me, the process is layering like putting a layer down and taking cues from that layer and the choices I made to create it to make the next choices for the next layer. So I'm kind of working layer by layer, attuning myself and paying attention to what's in the layer that's right in front of me. And this keeps me in the moment and it keeps me in flow. And it also helps me to just trust the process because I know that I can just keep layering until I like it. So that's one of my mixed media mantras is layer till you like it. And today I'm gonna to be showing you a seven layer art journal spread, which for me is like quite minimalist. It's a challenge, but since we don't have very much time, we don't have days, um, I will be kind of paring it down and we'll still have fun and we'll still play with those layers and we'll still play off the choices that we're making along the way. So the name of my book is Share Your Joy, 
mixed media shareable art. And I have a, um, there's a section that's all about just making the art papers that you use to create the projects. And then there are projects that are postcards, artist trading cards, note cards, greeting cards, a paper mobile, and then some embellished envelopes and an, an intention journal. So, so there's some, there's some pretty um, good projects in there. And one of the fun things about it is that because you're making all of the art papers or collage material, or most of it that you're making yourself, all of your projects are going to be totally you. So this is what I did with the girls. If you can think about at an art camp for kids, five days a week for six hours, what in the heck am I going to do with them for that amount of time? Well, we made a lot of art papers. We just threw paint onto papers, watercolors, spray inks, stenciling paint, like all kinds of different ways of just creating art papers that then the kids would use to create their projects. So that's basically how the book is structured in the same way that the, that the camps were. So you can kind of think of it, of it as an art camp in a book. Well, a girls artisan camp the way I did it in a book. So before we lose more time um, with the chit chat, I wanted to just show you the supplies that I'm going to use and get started. So um, I, I'm going to not have really paid too much attention to the chat going forward because I'm going to be focused. And I think Amy's here moderating if you guys have questions that I'm not answering, but I will also go back through the chat afterwards and check if there's anything that I can um, answer after the fact from, via, you know, via the comments um, to the recording or something like that. All right, so I'm going to switch my phone so that it's overhead and it's showing you what I've got on my desk. Adjust this a little bit. There we go. Does everybody see the desk okay? Check the. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate that. All right. So let's see. Make sure we've got this centered here. All right, so this little journal is a junk journal that I made. It has two signatures and it kind of, it, it's kind of a trifold. Um, I made it out of a bunch of, you know, kind of painted papers that I had and some other eco dyed papers and just plain papers. And I actually did a couple of Wonderless 2023 spreads in here. So this is one of Kasha's pastel, I think, was that one. And then I have Ray's pastels. Yeah, pastels is basically as far as I got. So no one should be embarrassed for not keeping up. <laughs> oh, I will get to it someday. I will get to it. All right. So this is the spread I'm going to be working in since it's kind of a plain one. And I have, um, I'm going to start out with just some watercolor, water soluble crayons. So I have three colors. This is purple, indigo, and English red. And then next I'm going to add some paint. I'm going to add these two colors together, scraping them on. This is just a deco art uh, Bahama blue, and this is paper artsy nougat. This is like one of my standby paints to add white. Rather than a stark white, I like to add this a lot. Then after that, we're gonna add some collage. So I have um, some collage uh, materials here, just some of my art papers. And when I went through my stash of art papers, I just picked kind of some colors that I liked that kind of go together. So this is several different papers. And, um, you know, I just like the, col the, how the colors and how they go together. And this is gonna help guide me in my color choices after I put this layer of collage down. So in a way, 
if you're thinking about how would you make your color choices for a project, you could start with some collage material, even stuff you haven't made. You could start with scrapbooking papers or whatever, as you know, coordinating colors in a, in a color scheme that you really like. You can't go wrong, right? Because if you like that, you're gonna like whatever you create as long as you keep taking cues from what you've initially chosen. So that's where I'm going with this. I've chosen these papers, I know I like them, I know I like how they go together, and that's gonna help me be in flow and create and take cues from these layers. So after we put the collage down, I'm going to, um, and I'm gonna use soft gel matte medium for my collage because I like that it's a little drier than uh, like a fluid matte medium and it sticks things down a, bit, a little bit better for mixed media layers than would a glue stick. So I'll be doing that. And then after we've got that collage layer down, I'm going to spread some of this nougat on to unify the pages and give myself some white space to work with again. Then I will add some, <clears throat> actually wait, after these, we're gonna add these paints out. We're in, we're in, we're in on track here. So yeah, we'll do the nougat to kind of mod, um, you know, bring everything together. Then we're gonna add some stenciling with a couple of other paints that I have here. I'm gonna use paint gray, with, paint gray with this to give myself some contrast. And I'm gonna use this kind of peachy pink that's a matte PBO paint and this kind of purple neon. It's not very neon, it's kind of like pastel. You'll see. And then after that, we're gonna finish up. So that's seven layers. Um, and I'm not counting the layer of gesso that I put down here. So that's not a cheat. That's not a cheat at all. I needed to prepare these pages because they're pretty thin. And I'm gonna put some water on here. So I wanted to just kind of uh, reinforce them a little bit before I go to town. All right, first layer is going to be these Karandash Neo Color 2 crayons. And I'm just gonna scribble like a kid and I wanna add color here. So I'm gonna go kind of whole hog with this. I'm gonna put down a significant amount of the this color, okay? Because I, I want to add color to the page, and if I just did little scribbles, I'm not going to get that much color there. This one's the darkest one, so I'm going to add kind of some more dramatic marks with this that will show up and um, coming through underneath. And then I just like any kind of pink, purple, pink, got to get it in there. And look, this looks like a kid drew it, right? It, it, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna embrace our inner child. We're gonna just play and have fun and not think too much, and not judge every little thing we do along the way. And I'm gonna activate these with some water. I have my, my water jar here, and this is just a Filbert uh, like watercolor brush. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to start. And if I need more, I'll add more. I wanna activate these. And it's okay if they mix together. I'm okay with that. This is only one layer. It's the first layer. And this will get covered up, you know. Actually, I'm gonna put my wax paper in here now that I'm getting messy. Yeah, and I'm putting, since I'm putting a significant amount of water on this, I'm gonna need to dry it with a heat gun. And then I can check out the chat a little bit and see if I can answer any questions. What I love about these um, Karandash Neo Color 2s is just how lovely the pigment is. The colors are great. I can blot some of this too. I don't have to um, worry too much that it's got, as long as it's activated, that's all I really care about. So I think I'm gonna take a wipe and I'm gonna blot a little bit. Especially in the seam, right? This is just a little junk journal, so it could get a little bit distressed if I didn't do that. 
All right, so this has got to dry a little before we can go on to the next step. So what I'm gonna do is hit it with the heat gun. I'm hoping it's not gonna be too noisy for you guys. Let me know and I can just kind of cover the mic or something. Hi, Amy. <laughs> Oh, you guys are so sweet. I'm so happy you're excited for my book. It means so much to me. Thank you, Delena, for doing that. I appreciate it. This is drying pretty quick. Yeah, this is just a layer of color and you can tell by my collage materials, right, that I chose these colors because they'll pick up what's in there. That should do it. And now I've got a scraper. Here's my scraper tool. I'm just going to put down these two colors, just a couple drops of them into the right into the page. enough for me but I don't know so I'd rather have not enough than too much right <laughs> and I am kind of thinking about the blank spots that I've got here first and then I'll spread it around elsewhere onto the page not covering the whole um, not covering the whole spread with this layer of paint I'm just kind of scraping it on in a kind of random fashion and getting it kind of, I think probably it's gonna end up being a half or maybe close to two thirds covered. But the thing about using a scraper is that it tends to create a thin layer of paint and the layers below it will um, show through a little bit. And this is just messy fun. There's not a real, um, plan going on here. That's the whole point is to embrace the randomness. Like I don't have a lot of control of how this paint goes on here with the scraper. I just have to let the scraper do its thing and it guides me. Okay. I, I feel like that's perfect. It's, it's got some new color in there. It's not um, taking over. It's got a good balance of color now. And it's um, it'll help me decide where to put my collage pieces in the next layer. You guys hear the dog barking? <laughs> He's got a big bark. All right, so this can dry just a little bit. It should not take very long to dry at all.
pretty much good. So like I said, I'm going to use um, a soft gel matte medium to collage. And um, that's, you know, my reasons for it are, are, I stated those. And it's really, it's just because I need this to be ready to get more layers on it usually. Um, it's not the final layer. So the matte medium, I put it down to glue something on. And then I put a little bit of the matte medium over the top. And it kind of seals it so that it's ready and primed for more stuff to go on top of it. And I do tend to burnish it with the brush. This is just a very cheap brush that I don't care if it gets anything on it. And this is picking up some of that paint that's maybe not completely dry, but that's okay because this is going to get covered up with other layers. <laughs> now I'm putting this, so I loved all of these colors right here, so I don't necessarily want to co cover those up. So that leads me to put these papers over more of this blue that I just put down. And so that's kind of how I'm making my choice of where to put these things is thinking about what I want to cover up, what I don't want to, what I don't want to cover up, what I like, looking at what I like and keeping what I like. And if there's something I don't like, I'm not hesitant to cover it up. I mean, it's not that I don't like it really. It's just maybe liking something more than something else. <laughs> and also not thinking too much. This is key, not to think too much about it, just play. And enjoy it, you know, and just, oh, look, what if I do this? It'll, it'll open up some white, white space, right? Because it's kind of a plain piece. I like to have, um, when I'm putting a collage layer down like this, I like to have my art papers, but I also like to have some neutral papers to break it up a little bit. So that's what's going on here. These provide a um, kind of a balance to the, like what I tend to create lots of colorful layers, right? So this just balances it out. It makes the colors pop a little bit. I'm gonna put this in the seam because it's a very thin layer, a thin thin piece of paper, very thin old vintage dictionary. And I know it will go into that fold and it won't give me a lot of trouble. It might even break <laughs> after a while in there. I just love creating with um, papers that I've made. It's the making the papers is a, a playful process that again, you don't, you're not in your head because you're not really trying to create a finished product. You're just trying to create something that will inspire you to create later on. And that's exactly what these papers are doing for me right now. They're inspiring my color choices. They're making me happy. I love the way they're playing together. I mean, I just like looking at them. So it's like creating with them is all the better. Actually, I really like this area. I mean, it, it could end up getting covered up anyways, but I'm just, you know, paying attention to what I like. And that's what I encourage you guys to do as you're creating. 
pay attention to what you like, what gets you excited, because that's how you're going to end up creating something that you love. And I am, like, I think you can tell, uh, creating a kind of a collage horizon here. I'm not going to cover up the whole spread with collage. And so if I'm not going to cover it all up, where do I put it? So I'm just kind of, it kind of just flows across the page in a horizon. We get one more piece of, um, neutral this is a coffee coffee dyed stained coffee stained <laughs> intentionally coffee stained all right and the other good thing about matte medium is that it dries pretty quickly so for purposes of this live these papers this collage should be drying pretty quickly but i will hit it with the heat gun too thank you robin yeah that's what i um it's kind of that process of not thinking too much. <laughs> Just put it down. <laughs> Tear it up and put it down. Good. <clears throat> All right. So now this is the next the next layer is one of those ones where it's all about a process of letting go. Because yes, I have this here. It looks really good. I like it, but I no, I need to keep layering. I don't know what it is, I just do. I have to keep layering. I want to create an opportunity for myself to add something new, some more color to this in some way. And um, I mean, you could stop at a layer like this, it'd be totally fine. You could add a focal point that is like lighter and then it would stand up off the page. You could um, write in, uh, you could add like a white or a, um, a brighter like text block and put your journaling in like that. You know, you could stop at this point, but that's never where I stop. I always do multi layers and because it's part of the playing, I want to keep playing. <laughs> so this nougat, I'm putting it on with a palette knife. I'm kind of, cut. I am covering things up. I am um, integrating things into the page. I'm trying to unify the collage and I'm also trying to give myself some new um, free space to add color. Now I've covered up a lot of this blue here but I want more of it to show through so I can always just wipe some of that white off or that nougat off with a wipe. And I like to use a palette knife for this because once again, it is something I can't really control that well. I mean, the br a brush would give me a lot more control and I could put the paint exactly where I wanted it, but I don't wanna be fussing that much with it. I want it to do what it wants to do. I want it to 
give me randomness that I can then play off of in unexpected ways. Give me unexpected things happening that thrill me. Like something unexpected that happens can just thrill you. And if you don't let that randomness play, I think you're diminishing the possibility that something could just happen and thrill you about this process. And like this kind of edge of this collage, it to me that looks kind of like it's, it's just a piece of collage stuck there. So I want to kind of meld it into my page and that's one of the reasons I'm adding this paint right now. One of the other reasons I'm adding it. <laughs> you know, I like that little botanical. So I want that to show, if, it, if I can get it to show. While the paint's wet, you can do some of that. You can wipe some of the paint off. All right. Okay, raise your hand if you feel disappointed that I covered so much of that up. <laughs> it's gonna be okay, I promise. Okay, so this has to dry once again, layers have to dry. I think that's another reason why spreads take me a while is that I don't always use a heat gun. I might go to a different journal spread and add a new layer to that journal and then come back to this one when it was dry. But I purposefully chose to do layers that I knew wouldn't be too hard to dry with a heat gun. good and the next one we're gonna use we're gonna put back some water soluble some more color now that I have some kind of muted um, light space here I it will receive a color now so this is a distressed crayon by Tim Holtz in seedless preserves and I'm just gonna add some scribbles something like that and then I'm gonna activate it not with too much water the the Tim Holtz are not as highly pigmented as the Karan Dash and the Neo Color 2s they're a little creamier and so they dissolve a little bit easier it doesn't take a lot of water to get them flowing And yes, since I'm adding water, I'm gonna to need to hit this with the heat gun once again, but it shouldn't take too long to dry. So I'm not adding a ton. But you see how that can show up because I put that white paint down. Okay, so someone's asking which layers I can tell you. The first layer, I had to prime my pages with gesso, but I'm not counting that as a layer. <laughs> okay, and then, um, so Lila, I'm talking to you, girl. <clears throat> the first layer was Karandash Neocolor 2s in three colors. 
scribbled all over the page. And then I activated those with some water on a brush, that filbert that I was just using. That dried. And then I added some paint, two paints, this Bahama Blue and this Nougat. And I um, scraped that on with a scraper. And then when that dried, I added the collage with my soft gel matte medium. And after that was pretty dry, I added the Nougat with the palette knife to unify everything and give myself some neutral uh, lighter areas. And then I just added that distress crayon. Thanks, Ellie. <laughs> we could put that in the comments. That would be cool. It's getting messy in here. All right. Now, I like the way this looks. I really do. The next layer is some stenciling, and I have these two stencils from Stencil Girl. I've suggested in the supply list that you use um, a stencil that has like some wider openings and then one that has smaller openings. So basically I'm adding some detail to the pages that's like, you know, maybe broader uh, imagery and then some tinier, some smaller marks. And these will be things I can play with in the finishing stages. So how many layers is that? We are down to layer number six. So layer number six is going to be the stenciling. I'm going to use this little dish. I'm going to throw in two, two colors. They're pretty um, similar in tone, so it's not like you're going to see a dramatic mixing happening. But I just really love that color, but I don't want it to overtake. And there's lots of this kind of peachy pink in my background, in those art papers that I used. So I'm going to add some of this to this dish. And then I have these little blending tools that I like to stencil with. To keep it keeps some paint off of my hands which when you're teaching it helps not to have a lot of paint on your hands I think so look I've got I want to put where I want to put this I want to put this where it's going to show up I feel like it'll show up here because it's a little like darker so I'm going to just go right here I'm going to kind of blend these together onto my tool it's going to end up being dominated by that pink, but I don't care. That's good. And I don't want to go all the way out to the square edge of this imagery because I don't want that, you know, edge appearing on my pages. But I do want these rays. So I'm just kind of going from the center outward to create this stenciled image here. And it's subtle, I know it's subtle. It's not gonna be super dramatic, but I'm gonna show you how I deal with that because I'm making the choice to use a paint that is kind of blending into my background. Because I'm making that choice, it leads to other choices in the finishing stages. So I wanna make these things, these rays, maybe I wanna make these stand out a little bit more than they're showing up. So in the finishing, when I'm adding details and doodling, I can outline some of these shapes with a pencil or a paint pen or a gel pen, and then I can bring them back out off of the page. Actually, I wanna get the ray to go up a little more right there. So maybe I'll do this. Maybe just a little bit more down here. All right. 
I tend to work in odd numbers, so I put three of these down, not two or four. To me, it just triangulates things and it balances them out in a way that's pleasing to the eye. And since I have a lot of this peachy paint still left in here, I'm not gonna be able to use that dish for my next color. So I'm just gonna use this little dish that my um, blenders are in. And I'm gonna use this stencil. This paint doesn't have to be absolutely dry for me to get started on this part. I'm using Payne's Gray. It's kind of an alternative to black and I know that's what I used in these collage pieces. So it will coordinate with what I already have on there. And it will give me contrast that I want without being too stark. And I'm not using the whole stencil, I'm just gonna get some of these little dots onto the page. Like so. Both of these stencils are from Stencil Girl Products. Um, I think that one with the rays actually has the name rays in it. I don't know. If you're interested, I could put in the comments, I could put the names of the stencil later on. And I know this botanical is a um, Rayma Sigmund ATC uh, botanical from Stencil Girl. So now I have three, but I'm gonna add a couple little more places. So then I'll have five. to dry a little bit before we can move on but the last layer is the finishing layer and for me finishing can be a lot of different things so it's going to be putting on my focal images or focal image and an like an accessory image kind of what I call it or several different um, images and I'm going to do uh, multi multiple images as kind of collaged focal points and then adding my sentiment or my art my journaling portion the writing portion is part of the finishing and then finishing with doodles and marks is also part of this layer so it's the last layer that has maybe several layers to it in terms of different things I do and I'm just gonna do what I have end up having time to do to show you. And then I will, if I don't have time to finish the whole thing the way I would normally do it, I will finish it and then I'll post some photographs of the finished one and explain what it is I added off camera. All right, so yeah, this is pretty much dry. So, take this off. And um, so one of the things I think that will work well with this, I mean, my glasses for the doodling, if the line's right, is like, I can just outline these rays with a pencil. And the background is kind of subtle, so I feel like this works well to accentuate them without making it too kind of crazy. 
And I like the look of pencil. I think it looks, um, you know, it looks kind of uh, grungy. It also, you can see your mark that you're making with your hand. So it adds kind of a personalization to it. I like to add like pencil scribbles sometimes in the finishing stages. And again, you know, working quickly, it helps you not to be too precious about it. And it's expressive, right? Because it's intuitive instead of being so, like, thought out. on here too while I'm, at, while I'm at it so that's one option and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and do my you know my last kind of collaging things and put down some masking tape so sometimes I like to add um, just lines of masking tape um, on which I can write my sentiment I have a quote here um, that I have in mind. So I'm going to just kind of lay the tape over here. I know I need six lines of tape. And like I said, I'm not going to be too precious about this or, you know, if it's all like even, I don't mind if the tape pieces are a little crooked. It gives me a space for my, where my writing will show up, right? <clears throat> so the reason I know I need six lines is because I wrote out my quote on a piece of paper the way I kind of want it to line up and then I'm choosing to use this kind of like uneven script to write. Um, so I oftentimes I put it down in pencil first, but because we're we've got a time limit, I'm gonna just go in with my micron. Where is my micron? There it is in my jar. This is an O3 micron. And you know, this is a little, you know, uneven surface. It's a junk journal. It's a junky journal. So it's got lots of uneven stuff. I'm not really too concerned about that because I'm gonna use kind of an uneven script. All right, so I'm doing, and I like microns because they're permanent.
So it's listen to the light, it will guide you. Listen to the peace, it will feed you. And listen to the love, it will transform you. And the little um, items I have to, to put on here to give it some focal point to it are these little moths that I sketched and then I scanned. Sorry, I just hit the stand. I hit the, um, I scanned these, I sketched them onto white paper, I scanned them onto my computer, and then I printed them onto ledger paper. So they have that kind of vintage um, coloring to them. And I can just, I'm gonna put these little moths throughout my pages because the moth is, uses the moon to navigate and so that's why they think, they think it, that the moth is drawn to our artificial lights. And the moth is a mist, kind of a mysterious insect because of the fact that it's nocturnal. It's kind of the mysterious um, version of the butterfly, but it, it, it symbolizes transformation in the same way that the butterfly does. So, um, I think this quote is about the light and it's about the trans and it's about transformation. So these little moths um, kind of just fit with that quote. Okay, so let's just do this. So and I just glue these down with a um, with a glue stick. And whenever I'm gluing with a glue stick, I like to have like a piece of paper down that so I don't get glue all over my glue surface. We've got five minutes, I got, a, I got five minutes to glue these on, kids. Let's see how long it takes, probably like two minutes. <laughs> Eek. All my little legs are like the glue stick is ripping them. <laughs> it's all right. So one of the things that I would do um, with these little black dots or dark dots is to take a um, like a gold gel pen and I would outline each of those to have them stand out a little, add a little, little bit of a glitz to the pages with that gold, kind of shimmery gold. And um, it looks more finished when those marks are outlined. I'll show you. Okay, it's just stuck. The glue that was previously there. Oh, I lost an antenna, it's okay. These are glued. I can just show you really quick. Three more minutes. All right. And I find this type of doodling to be very calming and meditative. Um, it's, I actually really love this part of this layer of art journaling. I feel like it adds my own hand um, to the surface and it adds detail and interest so that when someone's looking at the page, they're like, wow, look at that, look at that. Oh, what did she do? Oh, all those little dots. I mean, I'm famous for a bazillion little dots or tiny little dashes all over the place and I mean part of it is is that the process is just so meditative but then the result is very rewarding as well so you can kind of see how that adds 
a, a new dimension to the pages, right? So yeah, I'll finish up doing that and then I can take a picture of this for you guys and I can post it up. And we're, we've only got two more minutes to say goodbye. Thank you, Amy. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I hope you guys have fun doing a seven layer uh, art journal spread. <laughs> And thank you so much for joining me. Let me switch this back around. Thank you so much for joining me, you guys. It was been it's been super fun. I don't know if you can tell I'm a little stuffed up. I think I'm coming down with something, but this totally took my mind off of it. I appreciate that. And so it's been really fun. Um, I'm, I am glad you guys are saying you enjoyed it. So I appreciate that. And um, if you didn't catch the whole thing, the recording will be available for a little while and you can follow me at juicy.s.art on Instagram, or you can go to my website at it's juicy-s.net is my website. And thank you, Linda. Um, and then, you know, I will see you guys in Wonderless 2024. If you purchase it, You'll get access to some bonus lessons right away to keep you busy until the class launches at the beginning of the year. So I hope that you'll go in there and um, do my bonus lesson and give me your feedback on what you think of it. All right, have a wonderful afternoon.